Hello friends, welcome to another lecture on uh, the channel Tapas 2017. Today we will be talking about the neurochemical basis of personality and behavior as modeled by the three gunas, the Sattvic, Rajasic and Tamasic. So let's first understand the basic characters and the operational tendencies of these three gunas. The lowest level guna is the tamasic guna. Now this guna, I will put a letter T here to denote its tamasic, uh, represents ignorance, heedlessness, insensitivity, sloth, inertia, not willing to change, taking things at the face value, not questioning the reasoning or rational for a certain uh, activity. That is tamasic. So, Above that is the second level, which is the, the Rajasic Guna of, uh, denoted by R, of energy. So uh, Rajasic or Rajasic uh, Guna represents energy, full of uh, energy level. Things such as uh, ambition, motivation, your uh, dedication, commitment. Uh, when it is positively channeled, it becomes courage. When it becomes negatively channeled, it becomes frustration. And we'll talk about why it's important, both the positive and the negative uh, diversifications of, uh, of Rajasik Guna. The third one is, of course, uh, Sattva. And Sattva represents the state of harmony, balance, equanimity, mental peace, calamity, serenity, uh, empathy, compassion, unconditional love. All those things are represented by uh, sattva. So any, any trait, behavior, personality in the material world can be boiled down to one of these three tendencies. And these are the tendencies or environments around us that will bring out a certain behavior. So for instance, a person has a hundred dollar bill, they can go and buy uh, fruits and vegetables and uh, food stuff that the poor, needy, homeless people can eat or they can use that same hundred dollar to buy a gun to shoot uh, someone or go to a strip club and spend it on, uh, on uh, their uh, sensual desires. But the gift of hundred dollars is misused when it is given to the wrong person at the wrong time versus it is amplified when it's given to the right person in the right situation, the needy person who needs it the most. Uh, so that is why gift of giving has to be done under the right circumstances. So those are the qualities of sattva. Unconditional giving, unconditional love, and you're not expecting anything in return because uh, you do not need to have the reactionary, fruitive activities to break the cycle of karma. So those are the gunas of sattva. Now, let me boil it down into a fourth state, which is not actually a guna state, but is very important in terms of mukti or liberation. That is the fourth state of Turiya, where there is no goodness, no badness, no energy. It is the state of Shiva. Shiva itself means that which is not. So it is a state where there is no guna, there is no material energy, ambition, passion, desire, aversion, and still the person is experiencing only one feeling, un, uh, unmitigated uh, feelings of happiness or bliss, if you will. So that is called the state of Turiya. Now let's try to figure out the different neurochemical molecules or neurotransmitters that are associated with these states and how they influence behavior pattern in people. So, uh, let's start with rajas because that can bifurcate depending on the energy. If it is a sattvic rajasic element, it will go up. If it's a tamasic rajasic tendency, it will go down. So whether you want to come back as a human being and work on the place where you left behind in your last life versus go down into a lower loka uh, and work at a lower level because of the tamasic tendencies where the uh, intuition and the awareness have mitigated to even a lower level depends on the uh, guna 
you start with, which is mostly Rajas. That's the baseline. You can go above or below it. So Rajas, uh, in terms of neurotransmitters, is best represented by the neurochemical uh, norepinephrine. Now, people who have a scientific background will remember that epinephrine, adrenaline, norepinephrine, these are the uh, adrenaline hormones or the hormones uh, that you can best relate to muladhara which is responsible for survival. So if you are being chased by a tiger, your norepi will shoot up, your cortisol will shoot up, and those kind of hormones uh, will create a sense of urgency to act. And that's what Rajas does. It gives you the urgency and the energy and the capability and determination to break the existing cycle. If you are being chased by a tiger, run away. If someone is punching you, you punch them back. So that's the reflex reactionary activity to uh, adverse stimuli or to create a favorable circumstance. So anything that breaks the cycle of repetition and inertia. And what is repetition and inertia? That is tamas. So tamas represents your state of constant repetition, cyclical patterns for the sake of enjoyment, which is of course short last. And that's why you come back to the same motive and maybe you require a higher dose of the neurotransmitter, higher engagement of the receptors to create the same high, which is the definition of addiction. If you look up in DSM-5, you require a higher dose of the stimulus to get the same uh, high or uh, receptor saturation. So, tamas is best represented by dopamine. Now, dopamine is your pleasure molecule and dopamine uh, is the molecule that creates the sensation of uh, transient happiness, not bliss, transient happiness. So dopamine uh, can be best understood uh, from Katha Upanishad where uh, the distinction has been made between Shreya and Preya. Shreya is what is good for you, which is the ultimate stage of Turiya or even Satvik for this material world for most of us, versus Preya is what is pleasurable to you. So. Tamas represents the stage of Preya where you get enjoyment which is fleeting and Turiya represents the permanent, undiluted, pristine happiness which is represented by Shreya which is the long term gratification or the goodness that will persist forever. So dopamine creates pleasure and you have a need uh, to eat the chocolates, come back and eat more because it creates this transient effect of happiness and disappears. You want more of the chocolate to get the same happiness. So there's this repeated cycle of uh, uh, persisting behaviors that have to occur back and forth to create the sensation of joy. And that's why it is uh, subject to desensitization. And Sattva and Turiya are a little different because they are not sticky or compulsive or obsessive behaviors. So let's talk about the third one, which is sattvic tendencies. The sattvic tendency is best represented by the neurotransmitter oxytocin. And if you think about oxytocin, that's the bonding hormone. That's the hormone that uh, is released by mothers when they are uh, pregnant and when the uterine uh, contractions happen. And it's the hormone that binds the baby with the mother. So it helps with bonding. Primates, apes, humans, all of us have uh, the, it's a mammalian hormone, that's why they say, the tendency to secrete oxytocin. Now why is this hormone a sattvic hormone? Because this does not create uh, a desire with a, a reciprocal effect. It's one-sided, unidirectional, unconditional love. The love of a mother for her child. Now compare that with the love of a husband for his wife, which can be erogenous or tamasic. It can be sattvic sometimes, I'm not denying that. But most of the times in the material world, there's sort of a business, you know, between a husband and a wife. So you give me this, I will do this. You cook the food, I will bring the money. You take care of the kids, I will uh, buy you clothes, uh, health, wealth, whatever there is. So there's sort of a bargain back and forth going on and we are kind of working back and forth to create uh, change the balance there, but there's still some sort of balance. Nothing wrong with running a business, but it's you have to understand that there is a give and take, and that's why divorces happen. You will never hear a mom saying that I stopped loving my son as much as you will hear 
a, a wife complaining about the inadequacies of a husband it doesn't even take 50 years you, you can start hearing in the six months after marriage so that's why uh, rajasic love the love between two people because it's based on the personal sense gratification uh, the karmendriya the gyanendriya occupation that's why it is of a lower level than the sattvic love that comes from the soul between a mom and the child or the brahman and the atman because they are still giving you chance life after life to improve upon your existing condition so that is the beauty of oxytocin bonding hormone unconditional love and that is the hormone that creates the sense of empathy and compassion so all these feelings of uh, giving without expecting anything in return that is the hallmark of sattvic love generosity balance things like that now turiya is there a hormone that we can mimic in turiya not really because turiya uh, represents a state of nothingness but the closest i believe as a physician uh, we can get to the state of turiya in terms of neurotransmitters is uh, probably going to be gaba or g gamma amino butyric acid now this is a central neurotransmitter that is formed from glutamate which is an excitatory neurotransmitter but GABA creates a sensation of relaxation. So uh, when people are drinking alcohol, they have this transient sensation of relaxation, forgetting about the word. But GABA is the closest you can get in terms of mimicking the neurotransmitters to not care. There is no love, there is no hatred. There is this neutral feeling of self-sufficiency which is attributed by GABA molecule which will be the closest mimication, uh, mimicking the state of Turiya. So what's the beauty of uh, uh, Turiya and Sattvic state is that we can grow these states by mindfulness. Mindfulness techniques, things like transcendental meditation, sitting in a place 20 minutes a day, two times, uh, pronouncing the word Om or whatever mantra you have in your mind constant repetition to grow that level now mind it om is the highest level at the sahasrara mantra you can always start with a lower lung hung ang uh, any other lower chakra mantra depending on which level you are fixated at if you think you are fearful of not having food you cannot fast for a single day you should start with the mulakara if you think you want to get rid of the pleasure seeking tendencies alcohol addiction uh, 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 too much of sex, things like that, then you should work on the Swadhisthana. If you want to kill your Ahamkara, then you should work on the solar plexus, uh, I'm sorry, the Manipur, uh, Manipura, which is the solar plexus, exactly. Or if you are working on giving people unconditionally, not expecting anything in return, then you should work on the Anhata. If you are concerned about speaking the truth, no verac uh, only veracity, no lies, then you should work on the Vishuddha. If you're thinking about developing intuition to understand what people are feeling, empathy, things like that, then you should work on the Ajna. And if you're not caring about any of these things, you're not caring about unconditional love, attachment, anger, hate, anything, then you go on Sahasrara for which there is Om. So probably Om is a great place, but uh, depending on whether people want to start with a lower chakra mantra, that's fine. So pick your, pick your mantra and stick with it and constant repetition in and out concentrating on the mantra to change you the way you're thinking because a thought if it is in the native state will grow more if you contemplate on it it will turn into speech and action so my friends that is in short the uh, synopsis of various neurotransmitters as they are reflected in different states of environmental tendencies and please remember that we are the sum total of our influences and environments our company we keep the uh, the actions we engage on don't let boredom stick in because boredom will breed the masic tendencies always try to remain active and always try to create activity in the sattvic range because if you are thinking of activity in the sattvic range that is a positive energy of courage now if you are thinking of activity uh, in the tamasic range because you are failing time and again that will create frustration so you see that rasic can go either tamasic or sattvic depending upon the thought process you are breeding in your brain so please try to inculcate the right thought process and try to grow the right kind of neurotransmitters by constant repetition either through transcendental meditation or through kriya yoga or through gyan yoga things of that nature Thanks a lot for listening to this lecture.